they traded up to draft Vic, so you weren't like the worst team. Oh yeah, in the NFL, but you were you're down there. We were up there, yeah. You were up there. <laughs> we're up there, I <laughs> up guess. Up there, or down there. Anyway, yeah. Look at it. Uh, and then Vic comes along, and that ends up being a blessing because a lot of people around Atlanta would say Brian Finneran is his go-to guy, especially in the 2002 season. And that's when it really clicked. What was it about the 02 season that just made you just pop off? I think maturity, uh, growth through my game, and opportunity. Uh, my first couple years in Atlanta. I was a third or fourth guy uh, behind Terrence Mathis and Tony Martin and Sean Jefferson and a couple other guys. So I was still trying to find my way onto the field offensively. And then by 2002, I had done enough in 01 to show them I could play. And then they trusted me. And then Vic and I, for whatever reason, developed a really nice rapport on and off the field to the point where he trusted me a lot on scramble drills or third down situations. And I think between Algie Crumpler and myself, um, Vic knew that there was a better chance than not we were going to make a play for him. So, and then with his running prowess and athleticism, uh, and then the running backs that we had, I think mean, we led the league, but oh, four, maybe three, four, five. We led the league rushing two out of three of those years. So, uh, being a big receiver, I was able to block well and get after safeties and corners and spring guys loose for big long runs. And then also, like I said, make plays for Vic and, and uh, he did. He threw a nice uh, fade route to me and jump balls. And during that time, though, with uh, the transition, I mean, I know that Michael Vick and that whole thing happened. How did you? Uh, I, I guess I don't know if you remember hearing about that. Where were you? And how did the whole locker room react? So to it's, all that? it's interesting. Um, so I was I was close with Mike. His locker was right next to mine for six years. He was a funny guy, great sense of humor. He was always personable and, and good to me. There's stories about him where he'd be at the local Coke Kroger or Publix and a lady in front of him with a couple kids running around getting ready to get her groceries, and he'd just buy them for them. Uh, little things like that you don't hear about. You will hear about the dog fighting and, and that kind of stuff, but he's the ultimate redemption story, I think, with the stuff that he did and the things he's doing today. So good for him for coming out of that on, on the right side and, and understanding how important it was for him to, to do the things that he did. Uh, but it was tough. It was brutal. Uh, I didn't feel it as much as the other players because, like we just talked about, this was in minicamp in 07 is when I tore my knee up. And then going into training camp in 07 was when this stuff happened with Vic and everything came out. So I was off rehabbing and, and not – as much of the team as I wanted to be because Petrino again was a piece of work. So, um, but I saw there was helicopters and, and somebody rented an airplane and flew it overhead with a banner on the back of it, talking about Mike and the stuff that he did and the madhouse of media attention that was there at Flyer Branch. The first day of training camp was insane. Um, we had players in the preseason. I think Roddy White pulled up a shirt after a touchdown. Maybe it was a regular season game. I don't know. It said free Mike Vick. So, mm. There's a lot going on. Um, it was tough. Uh, first time I heard about it was probably the first time you heard about it in the news. And it was devastating. You hate to hear that a friend and, um, and, and fellow employee and, and, and friend, a good friend, could do the stuff that he was accused of doing. So unfortunate, terrible decisions, obviously, but we all make mistakes. And, and it's how, I think it's how you bounce back through that adversity. And, and Mike, is, Mike is a big-time I mean, an awesome story if you can kind of it's hard to do not remove it but take it all into account and then realize how far he's come since that yeah that you know there's going to be a lot of people that for the rest of their lives are going to be oh yeah dogging on michael vick mm -hmm. uh, poor choice of words but um <laughs> nice work but there's a lot to it like you said how he accepted responsibility for it put in his time and just come out on the better end of that. Uh, so I think there's a lot to, to learn from that. Uh, yeah, that the whole 07 season though, it was, you know, Joey Harrington coming in and then Byron Leftwich and all these like full first round. They hire Dimitrov and Mike Smith and, and get Matt Ryan. I mean, that was, you talk about changing everything, going from like the worst looking, ugliest franchise in the league at that time with all the stuff that's happened and the way we were playing to a playoff run with Matt in his first year and then 15 years of success with him later.